In this video, we'll look at finding the tension in two different ropes. And this question comes right off your textbook, page 142, number 13. There's a 70 kilogram man, and he's in a hammock. And the hammock has ropes supporting it at angles of 20 and 25 degrees. So we'll begin by drawing a sketch. And the first angle here is 20 degrees. The second angle here is 25, and there's a force pulling the man down. That's your force of gravity. And there's an equilibrium, or equilibrant force. That's equal, but in opposite direction. That's counteracting the force of gravity. Let's calculate that force of gravity for a 70 kilogram man. It's just 70 times 9.8. We'll pull out the trusty calculator. 70 times 9.8, 686. So there's a force of 686 newtons here. The ropes are each going to have tension. There'll be a tension going this way. We'll call that tension 1. And there'll be a tension going this way. We'll call that tension 2. And those two tensions have to add to the equilibrium or equilibrant force. There's a couple other things we know. If this is 20 degrees, well, we know this hits at 90 degrees, so this angle 70. And if this is 25 degrees, well, this hits at 90 degrees, so this angle 65. So let's draw our force diagram. We have this vector T1, that first tension, plus the second tension vector. Let's draw it like that. T2. And that has to add up to that equilibrium force, which I know also has to be 686 newtons. It has to equal this force in magnitude. It's in the opposite direction, but same exact force. And I know that the angle in here is 70. That is, it's 70 right here between this straight up force and the tension. So this angle is 70. How do I get the other two angles? It might help to sort of complete the parallelogram. just so you can see. And I drew it a little fainter because I'm not going to use that side as much, but just to help me get the angles. I also know this angle here is 65, so it's 65 in here. There's different ways now you can get the remaining angles. For example, this angle is 65 because of Z pattern. I know there's 65 in here. Or you could have done these two angles add to 135, so C pattern, this angle of 135 and this angle have to add to 180, so this angle's 45. So I filled in this triangle here, there's 686 newtons on this long side, I have all my angles, now I just need to calculate my tensions. Oh, and I forgot the little arrow there. So let's calculate the magnitude of tension on this first vector, on T1. So we want to figure out what T1 is, and we'll use sine law the magnitude of T1 divided by the sine of its angle equals 686 divided by the sine of its angle. And now I'm going to solve for the magnitude of T1 on my calculator all at once by going 686 times sine of 65 equals divided by sine 45 and I get 879, say 0.3, we'll round to one decimal place. Newtons, put a rounding dot, and there's my tension in the first rope. So I'll look at my diagram again. I have the second tension vector here. That's T2, and I'll look for its magnitude by dividing T2 over the sine of its angle equals, again, 686 over the sine of its angle. So, the tension in the second rope, or the magnitude of T2, is just 686 times sine 70 divided by sine 45, and we get approximately 911.6 newtons. Therefore, the tension 
in the wires is 87, 897.3 newtons and 911 newtons. So we've solved for the tension in the wires by setting up our diagram and then creating a position, sorry, a vector diagram and solving for the angles and then using this triangle and sine law to solve for the tension in the wires.